In this video, I'm going to show you how to virtually take any logo and convert it to a 3D printed file within Tinkercad. So the first thing you want to do is find a logo that you want to print. I'm going to print this logo, 17-bit, which is one of my favorite game developers. So you can see that even with complex logos, this method still works. I'm going to organize this video by one, showing you the steps very quickly. And then after that, I'm going to actually show you more of the inner workings of what I do in Tinkercad. That way, if you're experienced, you can see the first two minutes of the video and you're good to go. But if you want more background and actually to see some of the modeling, you can stay for the entire video. So the first thing you need to do is take your image, your logo that you want to print from a svg a png and convert this to a svg file this is a file that tinkercad can import that is going to be the foundation of how we're going to create this model i've used convertio.co i've never gotten viruses it's always been very reliable i recommend using it but you don't have to use this so download this svg next we're going to import this into tinkercad so now we want to import this into Tinkercad and I'm going to show you a very easy example right off the bat and then we'll hop into the more complicated example of 17-bit. So let's take a look at this Adidas logo. Well, you look and it's not exactly what you would think, but say we just want the Adidas logo right there. So what we can do, and there's a lot of ways to do this, and you gotta use your ingenuity. It's probably gonna differ based on each different logo or whatever you're making, but I'm gonna turn this into a hole and I'm going to just make a really big block. I'm going to extend this past that block. And then when you join these together, boom, there we go. I got the Adidas logo. And even better yet, I can go choose the file again, import this. And if I want a nice backdrop, well, now here we go. I can print this. Certainly, we're going to want to scale it for our print. But now we have the Adidas logo, and you could chop this block down even more, whatever size you want. So that's a very easy description of something that you could do to re replicate your logo. And if you have something easy, that is how you do it. So now you have to remember that these things are different colors. I have a dual extruder printer, and if you do, that makes our life a lot easier because you can print this in one go. You do have to separate the exports, so I need to select the first part, export this as an STL, and then select the second part and export this as an STL. You have to do the same thing even if you're using like an Ender 3 or just a single nozzle printer, but the way we slice this will be different. Let's hop into that right now. So now that we're in Cura, this is my slicer of choice. What we can do is bring in the two different logos. So I'm going to do that now. Remember, we exported these separately. So now we can bring these in. And if you have a dual extrusion printer, what you can do is first thing, you need to decide what color you want what. So I'm going to say the Nike or the Adidas logo here is going to be extruder one and the other is going to be extruder two. Now, if you select both of these and right click, if I can actually do that correctly, we can merge models. And what that's going to do is it merges them the way you exported them. So if you're in Tinkercad and you export them and they're not perfectly aligned, when you import them in here, they will not be perfectly aligned either. So you need to ensure that's correct. And then at this point, you know, you can scale down and all that stuff. Now, if you have a Ender 3 or a single extruder, you're going to do something very similar, but you are going to bring these in separately. You are going to print them separately. And then what I would normally do in this specific case, and this depends on printers, this depends on what you're printing, I would give myself some leeway for the actual Adidas logo. So I would maybe do 97% uh, you know, scale. That way it doesn't have to fit in perfectly, but you may print yours and 97 may be too small and it looks weird. So maybe you'll need to go to 98. That's just going to depend on your printer. It's going to depend on a lot of factors, but that is ultimately how a very easy logo you can take from an image to make your very own logo. At this point, I hope this certainly helped you. 
use this guide. I've made every logo that I've wanted to to this point, not saying that it'll work for every single logo in the world, but it works pretty well. You need to buy no different equipment, spend no money on software. Everyone can do this. Now I'm going to hop to the 17-bit logo and show you a more complicated logo, the steps that I've taken to achieve a 3D print that, in my opinion, looks pretty good. So let's cover that right now. Okay, so for 17-bit, what we want to do is go ahead and bring this logo in. So at this point, you want to think about the fact that if we look at our image, the background is black. We've got these tan letters, so there's two colors right there. Probably have two prints, one that's black for the background, one that's tan for these and then we're going to have to have different prints, different files for all these different colors. So that's how you want to start the layout in your mind, what you need to model. So right here we have our basic model. And when you do fill mode, there's an option to do silhouette. So we are going to see what silhouette does here very soon. And this is a really nice feature. Pretty much that makes this entire thing possible. So if you do silhouette... It takes a little while sometimes to work, but you see it kind of remains and keeps the shape, but it eliminates any holes. That is really nice. So right here we said this is going to be all black when we print it, and the numbers and some of the letters here are going to be tan. So I'm going to make that tan. So we're ultimately going to want to bring this together. And I do, just so it's a little easier to see, I'm going to do like this. But notice that even when we align these two, because they're perfectly the same shape, they kind of overlap each other. We don't really want that. I've tried to print that way, and it doesn't work well. If you have a double extruder printer, it, at least with the SV04 and Cura, the lines print over each other so the slicer thinks that there is a line of black and then a line of tan in that same space and so it doesn't work well even if you had just use a single nozzle trying to do that uh, it, it's not going to work that's not how it how it would work so what ultimately we need to do now is take the black portion Again, I'm going to copy and paste. You do a lot of copying and pasting. So right here, I'm going to turn this into a hole. And I'm going to combine these. And there we go. That is our inside. And you see it looks really nice. We are now able to bring the black over, align these. And ultimately, we have two different prints that are the inside numbers and letters and then the outside black areas. And normally what I do is I bring this a bit above where the black is. That way it stands out and it's easier to print. So this already looks really good in my opinion. I think this looks great. Fantastic start. However, now we have these. So right here, what we can do is copy and paste. But what we need to do is eliminate all the tan except for this one piece. And that is just going to be brute force pretty much. So I am going to make boxes and then I'm going to delete everything around those. I'm going to do this, clean it up, and I will come back to you. That way you don't have to see me just add a bunch of boxes and ultimately just delete all of these things. But ultimately you'll see I want just the tan piece by itself. In fact, I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm almost there anyhow. Maybe I'll have you stick with me here. So just delete these. There we go, perfect. So delete and combine all. We're left with this one little piece, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So copy and paste. Now we want to make this a hole and we want to align this perfectly over where this currently is. We know that tan piece is right perfectly where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna reduce my snap grid I'm going to choose this, 
and I'm going to do my best to align it perfectly. Will it be absolutely perfect? Maybe not, but it at least needs to be close. Let's see what it looks like. Oop, oop, not whole. There, oh darn. There we go. Hold that. Now select and combine. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so it made a nice little hole right there. So now remember when we print this, there is going to be a hole both in the black and tan areas right here, which is exactly what we want because we're going to have separate prints that ultimately will fill in these gaps. So you're going to do the same thing with all three of these. Now this, there's no perfect way to do it. I've, you know, honestly, if you really look at mine and you are really persnickety, you know, I'm sure it's not perfect. But what I'm going to do is align all three of these together because we know they are in a line. You know that there is, according to our picture, there is some space in between, and certainly they give us the color. So this, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is good enough. So this we only need to combine with the black. Combine these. Then the last piece of the puzzle right here is to create this little triangle. And this is simple as rotate these over. And you do have to play sometimes with the sizing and you know it's this, that was easy because it was already done for us. But for example, this triangle, we're really going to have to play with. So I'm going to say 10 and 5. I think that's still going to be way too big. So I'm going to do 2.5 and 5. Certainly that doesn't need to be that tall. So I'm going to bring this over. Psych, it needs to be taller. And I'm going to... There we go. One thing I really do wish Tinkercad had was a scale. So this, you know, I it actually looks pretty good. I can maybe make it a little bigger. Depends on how detailed you want. Now, one thing I will say, this is so small that I'm not going to put a hole in here and 3D print a separate print to then fit inside of this model like I'm going to do for these. It's just too small. It doesn't have the resolution. So what I'm going to do is create a very thin triangle and I'm just going to glue it on top of it. So it will be a little taller and go above some of this tan portion, but that's okay there's no way to print something that small and it be that good with a hobbyist printer. So at that point, really, we're pretty close to being done. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, what I would do is select the tan portion. I'm going to export this. Select the black portion. Export this. Select the color doodad. Export that. And my little triangle, I am going to export that. And then in the slicer, what we will do is just do exactly. I won't even go through all this because you can see, you see what I'm essentially doing here. Once I print these out, I'm going to color these with either, again, dual extruder or single extruder. And then those will pop in place right there. I'm going to put that on top and glue it right there. And... Pretty much our logo's done. So let's hop to the slicer, just show you real quick maybe what to expect here, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so now that we're in Cura, we are just going to bring in our different models. So right off the bat, because I have a dual extruder, I'm able to print both of these at the same time. So I'm going to, just like I did previously, select both. I'm going to merge. And because they were appropriately placed in Tinkercad, they will join here and this should work. It's going to print exactly as you see. It should work well and that's what I've actually done. One thing to note, when you have prints like this and you have a dual extruder printer, one thing you absolutely are gonna want to do is here in travel, there are some, if you click on that button, there are some visibility and settings that you can add. 
it's very easy, and I ran into this issue, where because this portion right here is black and the other is tan, you can get some overlap to where I think what happened right here, for example, is the printer printed in the B, this bland, this, wow, brand, this little black line right here. And then when it got done, it came over to the bottom portion of the B and printed this black line. But what happened is some of the black drug across the tan and you could see a black line going from here to here and so I needed to have a taller tan portion to cover that black but these things will assist in that by enabling retraction the retraction distance avoid the printed parts when traveling and z hop when in retraction so those help a lot those are absolutely necessary you have to add those if you are in ender 3 or your single nozzle that won't be as big of a deal because you're printing those separately anyhow right and then you're just going to have to pop these in perfectly so right here go ahead slice this you're good to go now all you have to do is i mean you've you've guessed it you have here and then you can print one or two colors you can multiply them if you want to make multiples of them and then there you go simply you just print as i mentioned sometimes because these are being printed and put into the first thing we printed i'm going to put these at a 97 percent scaling and add those in and actually that's not quite right because i want the z distance to be the same so i'm going to keep that at 100 but the x and y i'm going to trim down to 97 that will allow me to put those into the little holes within the main model again i'm going to do same thing for the um for that triangle and then let's print this add it together and just combine it and see what it looks like 